Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're looking at the histology of the GIT, which is the gastrointestinal tract. Now, histology is the study of cells and tissues. If I were to take a biopsy of your skin and then slice it up into very thin segments and look at it under the microscope, that is histology. Now remember, with the gut or gastrointestinal tract, it's one big long tube that starts at the mouth and moves all the way down to the anus. I've made a mistake in my lectures before in which I've stated today's students were going through mouth to anus. Unfortunately, it's not a very good way to start a lecture. But we are going through cheek to cheek. And if we look at this continuous tube, you'll find that from the esophagus, it goes to the stomach, to the small intestines, to the large intestines, sigmoidal colon, rectum, and anus. And if you were to continue from your cheeks of your face, and move into your oral cavity, you could effectively move all the way down through and exit out at your other cheeks, okay? Now remember, that means that the inside of our GIT is continuous with the outside of our body. And the outside of our body is lined with a certain type of cell called epithelia, which means the inside of the GIT is also lined with epithelia. But this epithelia changes in its structure depending on where along the GIT we're talking about. Because remember with epithelia, its form or structure equals its function. So if it's there for protection, it's gonna be many layers of squished epithelia, which we call stratified squamous. That's actually what our skin is covered with, stratified squamous epithelia. If it's there to allow for gases to move through, it's a single layer, which we call simple and squamous, squished. But there's not gonna be any diffusion happening in the GIT, so you're not gonna see any simple squamous. But if you've got a simple layer, but it's made up of columnar cells, big, long cells with big intracellular compartments, it's gonna be there for secreting substances and absorbing substances. And you see this a lot throughout the tube of the GIT. So if we have a look at the epithelium, so remember, we've got this big long tube going from the mouth to the anus. You'll find that this big long tube is made up of around about seven different layers. You can see these layers here. The most internal layer being the hollow inside, like I said, is lined with epithelia. All right, the next layer that surrounds that, all epithelia sits on connective tissue. Therefore, the next layer is connective tissue, and we term that the lamina propria. And this connective tissue layer has blood vessels, nerve fibers, and lymphatics. I'll talk about it again in a sec. Then the third layer is called the muscularis mucosa. This is a muscle layer, very thin muscle layer, made up of two different types of layers. One is circular muscle, which means if you've got the hollow tube, the muscle is arranged around that hollow tube, which means if it constricts, it narrows the hollow inside, which we call the lumen. So the lumen is the hollow inside. So the circular muscle narrows the hollow lumen. And the second layer is longitudinal muscle, and it goes along the length of the hollow tube, which means when it contracts, it shortens the tube. Together, circular and longitudinal can help move things through. These three layers together, the epithelia, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa are all termed the mucosal layer of the GIT, the very first most internal layer of the GIT. If we look at just the epithelia to begin with, and we start at the esophagus, remember the esophagus is simply a pipe, a conduit that allows for foodstuffs to go from the mouth to the stomach. It doesn't absorb anything, doesn't secrete anything, doesn't let for anything else like that happen. It's just there for movement. And therefore, the type of epithelia is going to be epithelia for protection, which we know is stratified squamous epithelia. When we get to the stomach, it's pretty much the first site of digestion, both chemical and mechanical digestion. And the types of cells you'll find will be a simple layer, so a single layer of columnar epithelia. Now, this col columnar epithelial layer can form these pits that we call gastric pits. And these gastric pits have a number of different types of cells. You've got what's called mu mucus secreting neck cells, so it secretes a mucus. You've got parietal cells, which secrete hydrochloric acid, and G cells, and other different types of cells that secrete a whole bunch of enzymes and chemicals that aid in the digestive process in the stomach. Now, they don't have anything called goblet cells. This is another type of mucus secreting cells, but they're specific to the small and large intestines. So when we move down to the small and large intestines, they are also simple columnar. Remember, when you've got columnar cells, they have very large intracellular compartments, which means they have a lot of 
smooth endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, ribosomes, so they can produce a lot of things. The types of things they're producing are enzymes and chemicals for secretion into that hollow inside. But they're also there to absorb stuff and maybe change it around a little bit if it needs to. So remember that. So in the small intestines, this is the first site predominantly of absorption of nutrients of minerals, of vitamins, of electrolytes, of water. All these things are being absorbed in the small intestines, which means if it's absorption, we need to increase the surface area of the small intestines to maximize the amount of things we absorb. So what we have are these projections of the GIT in the small intestines that look like this, projection up and down like this. They look like fingertip-like projections and they're called villi. Only the small intestines have villi and they're there again to increase the surface area. In actual fact, the villi are just projections of the lamina propria. They are not projections of the epithelia. They're lamina propria. You can see this underlying white area here is lamina propria projecting up, again, in the small intestines. What you can see are these single, or oh, simple, single layer, columnar epithelia lining on top of that lamina propria. But you can also see on top of the simple columnar epithelia, these little, what look like more fingertip-like projections on the epithelia, and they're called microvilli. So the microvilli are extensions of the epithelia, and the villi are extensions of the lamina propria. Very important, increase the surface area, allows for us to absorb all the things we need to absorb. You see this green thing that I've drawn in here, part of the lamina propria? Well, that is going to be a lymphatic vessel, and what you see is these lymphatic vessels move up the villi like this, and they're called lacteals. These lacteals are important because when the small intestines absorb fat, which they often do, fat, unlike glucose, Fat, unlike proteins, get absorbed straight into the lymphatic system and then shuttle around the body via the lymphatics. Really important point. If we compare the small intestines to the large intestines, the major difference is there's no villi in the large intestines. No villi. There are microvilli that you can see here lining these simple columnar epithelia, but that's basically it. Both small intestines and large intestines have glands, and these glands have goblet cells that secrete large amounts of mucus as well. Now remember, once we get down from the large intestines to the rectum, the rectum from proximal to distal, from most inside to most outside, changes the type of epithelia. It starts off as simple columnar, like pretty much everywhere else, and then it goes to simple cuboidal, so the cells get a little bit smaller. Then it goes to stratified squamous, many layers of squished cells, so now we're looking at protection, right? And then once we get to the very and we're nearly at the other cheeks, right? And so we're gonna have stratified squamous epithelia with keratin. Keratin is a protein that your epithelia produces to make cells strong and waterproof. We have this in our skin, which is no surprise because that's gonna be, like I said, continuous with the very end of the rectum. So this is a quick overview of the mucosa of the gastrointestinal tract.